So it started out in what I call the earthworm's eye view, a very primitive course, unresponsive realm. It was like being in dirty cello. I do remember kind of a feeling, not just of, of what I saw and kind of heard, but also what I could feel. It was this uh, tactile sensation of being surrounded by roots or blood vessels. And although it sounds very foreboding to talk about it, given I had no memory of anything else, I had no words, no language, no memory of Evan Alexander's life, none of my religious concepts or knowledge of this universe or of humanity. Uh, that gave me an empty slate. And that's what allowed for an especially deep and profound and far reaching journey with a tremendous number of very important lessons uh, bundled with it. Now from this uh, earthworm I view, luckily I was rescued. There came a slowly spinning pure white light that was surrounded by fine uh, silvery and golden tendrils. And as this white light came towards me, slowly spinning, I noticed it had a musical melody. And that became very important as a theme because what we remember is music, notes, frequency. Those kind of things can actually serve to allow our soul to traverse these various levels. So sound was a very important concept, although I hope people realize that in those realms, far beyond the here and now and the sense of the physical, sound can go way beyond what we normally think of as music in this uh, four-dimensional space-time it can be far more extraordinary. It's really coming kind of from Plato's world of ideals. And that was kind of the music I heard. And that's what ushered me up through this portal that led from that uh, primitive subterranean earthworm's eye view up into this rich, ultra real gateway valley. Uh, and the gateway valley was where so much of the action happened in this journey, although it was not the ultimate destination as I'll explain in a few minutes. But the Gateway Valley was kind of an intersection point with lots of kind of Earth-like features. I was a speck of awareness on a butterfly with millions of other butterflies uh, surrounding me and uh, looping and spiraling in these vast formations. And I remember witnessing below us this meadow, perfect, verdant, fertile meadow surrounded by this rich forest. There were no signs of any death or decay and the flowers, blossoms, buds on trees, what have you, we're all demonstrating this dynamic, rich explosion of life and of meaning and of power and of existence, of will, of this sentience. It was just an amazing uh, thing to live through and, and to witness. The amazing thing for most people uh, to understand is that it was much more real than this world. It was packed with kind of meaning and uh, the, the extent of of uh, kind of existence and uh, to me it was a very instructive and informative and not only that it was very comforting i remember beside me on the butterfly wing was a beautiful young woman sparkling blue eyes high cheekbones broad smile high forehead she never said a word to me she never had to but her message which i think was the central message i was to bring back to this world was very simple uh, and it was delivered telepathically, emotionally, connecting with her soul. You are deeply loved and cherished forever. You have nothing to fear. You are deeply cared for. And I cannot tell you how affirming and refreshing that message was, especially coming in the setting of that extraordinary earthworm eye view and the ascendance through this portal up into this ultra real gateway valley. That was truly an extraordinary uh, transformation. And the interesting thing is how much it felt like home. It was a spiritual home uh, that was very reassuring. I think to me, especially in retrospect, one of the biggest surprises was how beautiful and accepting that realm was. Now, in that setting, I remember also seeing below us in this meadow, thousands of beings dancing, lots of joy and merriment. And I remember seeing all of that and uh, this beautiful girl on the butterfly wing and they all, all dressed in the same kind of simple garb and yet it was very colorful. I remember this soft summer breeze that blew through and that breeze, which I called in my early writings weeks later after coming out of coma, the divine wind or the breath of God was my awareness of the power and the majesty and the personal kind of nature of that infinitely loving God force that was present all throughout these heavenly scenes and extending down to the lowest levels of the material realm and then all the way up to the highest levels that I ascended to in this journey. After witnessing that soft breeze and it's uh, bringing to my awareness the power of that uh, infinite uh, God force, that healing force of love and compassion and kindness, that's when the journey really opened up and that gateway became just that, a gateway, because in fact, all the joy and merriment were being fueled because up above, 
were these swooping orbs of angelic choirs that were emanating chants, anthems, hymns that would just thunder through my awareness and uh, reverberate with this kind of oneness of love and of meaning and purpose and existence. And what I witnessed, these angelic choirs providing yet another portal, a wormhole up into higher and higher levels. And at that point, I remember seeing all of four-dimensional space-time and the lowest material realms collapsing down. And then all of that spiritual realm that I was just now visiting and getting to know in this uh, profound fashion with a different uh, causal ordering that I call deep time. Important to point out, for example, life reviews, which you've often heard about, your life flashing before your eyes, those go back at least 2,400 years in the literature on near-death experiences. And the life review is remarkable for two main facts. One is that these are not just a vague sepia-tinted remembering of various events, but they're an actual reliving of events in our lives. And interestingly, we don't experience it so much from our perspective as from the emotional perspective of those around us who were influenced by our actions and even our thoughts. That's a really crucial thing to get about life reviews because it's showing us that we relive the event. And part of that is the ability to learn and transform from those that reliving. And the reliving, of course, involves dissolution of this apparent boundary of self that we normally live through, uh, you know, in this world in these bodies. But in the life review, the fact that we're sharing the dream of the one mind seems to kind of come to the fore. It's still clear that we have free will, that our choices about how we deal with ourselves and others is very important in all of this. And in fact, determines kind of our soul journey in this unfolding. So from this point of this gateway valley and the many earth-like features, what happened was there was this next portal up. And that's when I saw all of the time and the material realm collapsing down, deep time and the spiritual realm. Deep time allows for things like life reviews to be a, a real reliving and not just a remembering of events. And deep time also allows basically the transformation and evolution of all consciousness, which I think is what is going on. Here. So in other words, just remember that what we view as earth time is just here to support the drama when our lives are unfolding as we live them, but that there's a much deeper and richer way of looking at it that can include this kind of phenomenon of life reviews and kind of a mid-course correction that is also showing us that the boundaries of self are a fiction. And from that, I ascended up through this next light portal up into what I call the core. It was an infinite inky blackness, but filled to overflowing with this divine and infinite infinitely healing God force of love, kindness, compassion, mercy, acceptance, forgiveness, all of the deepest and most profound principles of interactions of sentient beings in our journey of discovery. In that core realm, I've witnessed the entire higher dimensional multiverse shrunken down to this complex oversphere as a teaching tool for many of the lessons to be provided there. Uh, had visions of like what I call the flying fish uh, vision and the Indra's net vision that showed me very clearly life reviews and reincarnation in this very profound package that showed that our souls ascend towards oneness with the divine, but it cannot occur in one physical lifetime. So by necessity, it involves several lifetimes. And of course, I came back to this world shocked by that revelation because I'd never studied the scientific evidence for reincarnation before. Now, in my journey in that core realm, in the core itself was this oneness with the divine. And I came back realizing that that deity, and I call that deity, as I describe in the book Proof of Heaven, I call that deity Om, because when I came back from my coma, the word God was a puny little human word with a ton of baggage to it. And I realized it didn't matter if you were going to label that infinite force of love and compassion and wholeness at the very source of our conscious awareness. If you wanted to call it God or Allah, Brahman, Vishnu, Jehovah, Yahweh, Great Spirit, I don't care. That debate is meaningless. The reality of that infinitely loving force at the core of existence is what in the ears have been reporting for thousands of years. And that is the important lesson is that the ambience of this universe, uh, when we look at it through the raw data of personal experience of human beings who have had near death experiences, which are out there by the millions, what we end up discovering is that this universe, that background is one of harmony, is one of love and peace uh, and one of prosperity for all. 
which is certainly not something that is what emerges through the translation into our current material realm and the human situation. And that's why I think it's so important that we've had 5,000 years for religions to try and teach us these deep lessons of love, oneness, compassion, and kindness that indie ears have been uh, screaming from the rooftops for thousands of years. But now that the science of consciousness is allowing us to demonstrate that science fully supports the reality of these kind of journeys, it does doesn't defy it as the materialist neuroscientist in me would have tried to argue before my coma. But in fact, very consistent with the emerging science of consciousness is a vision of this oneness and love, the spiritual uh, nature that we share. And that was apparent to me, especially as I would oscillate through these various levels to my journey. Because in that core realm, with uh, so much revealed about uh, sentience and the transformation and evolution of all consciousness, I would suddenly find myself back down in that earth for my view. Important thing is I noticed very quickly by remembering the musical notes of the melody, I was able to conjure up that light portal that took me back up into the Gateway Valley yet again, always reassured each time I entered there by that beautiful young woman, my spiritual companion on the butterfly way. And then I would ascend up through those angelic choirs again to the core realm. This happened multiple times. And every time entering the core, I was informed, you're not here to stay, you'll be going back. I had come to believe that going back was actually going back to the earthworm's eye view. And I seemed to have solved that problem because I now knew I could remember the musical notes of the melody and always resurrect those pathways up into the gateway valley and then even deeper into the sanctum sanctorum of the divine in the core realm. But they weren't kidding. And there came a time when I tried to conjure up remembering the musical notes of the melody, and it no longer worked. So I was stuck down in those murkiest levels akin to the earthworm's eye view. But I also knew at that point that I could trust, that I would be taken care of, that the universe had a deep love for me, and that that would be honored in anything moving forward. And it was at that point that I witnessed thousands of beings going off into the distance around me, heads bowed, some holding candles, some with uh, hands up like this. And this murmuring energy coming from them was surprising to me. And the surprise was in that I felt this tremendous comfort and that feeling of a spiritual home that was similar to what I'd felt in the Gateway Valley and in the core realm. But now I was feeling it right here in this moment and uh, kind of stuck in that never never land of the earthworm's eye view and yet all of these beings were generating this energy that was welcoming me back somewhere i didn't know where to and when i wrote it all up weeks later i said that was the 